Don't sweat it, man. You got the Super V. I got the bread. Hey, I dig that bomb with the Hemi. My Buick just doesn't make me feel like I do in this Charger. Would that beautiful Swinger 340 be too hard for me to handle? That's it, Dad. Ask him. Ask him about that Challenger RT. If I take that Coronet RT and the 440, what axle ratios can I get? They're laying it on you. Are you hip? And that's your scat pack and all its goodies there eyeballing. Berlitz we ain't, but you don't need a Berlitz language course to sell performance cars. All you need is to know your product, who uses it, where, and how, and just a little of the performance language. Hi, I'm Bill Tanner. On the drag circuit, I meet plenty of people who like performance cars. It's true that a lot of them are real shade tree mechanics, but it's also true that a heck of a lot of them probably know less than you do about cars and how they work. I think you can pinpoint your performance car prospects by putting them in one of four categories. One, he wants a car for show. What the car will do is second to what it looks like. The buffs call this kind of car a wax job. And he's the kind of guy who'll want a hood scoop, mag wheels, and buckets. Another one is a guy who wants a strong sounding and a strong feeling car for street use. He'll want no frills or comfort. That's not the in thing. Another kind of buyer is a guy who's a little more knowledgeable about souping up his car and wants to use it for street and strip use. Finally, here's a man who wants an all-out competition car. He'll want the hottest stock combination available. He'll know just what he wants the car to be able to do. And just how he's going to modify it. Incidentally, when the word gets around that you're talking and selling performance in your dealership, you'll have a lot more like him. They'll buy cars and they'll buy parts. Let me take a minute here to emphasize one point. You don't have to be a car engineer or a racer to sell performance cars. Any good car salesman can sell a scat pack. Performance cars are often easier to sell than your straight wheels. The language of performance selling is simple. Certainly nothing to make you back away from a performance car prospect. What the hell? You're a professional car salesman. And he wants to buy a car. Okay, let's get down to the nitty-gritty, as the younger generation says. Let's find out what it takes to get there from here. What do we have to know? What do we have to do? Well, going in, you gotta dig your own bombs. What the cars will do. What you offer to make them more powerful and more powerful looking. Like the five scat packages. Staging kits, you might call them. Add-on goodies. Building from this dress-up kit, the showboat, we move up a step to the readout, which includes a full sweep tack, fuel pressure and oil pressure gauges, then on to the cruncher, as the scat packer begins thinking seriously about running on the strip as well as on the street. This one includes a hot ring and pinion, matching speedometer pinion and Hurst shifter. This one's called the B lever. It has matching high-rise manifold and carburetor, Street or strip cam, the car buffs say streep, and headers. If he really means business, that's a pun, take it both ways, he'll want the top eliminator, which gives him the six-pack hood with pins, the six-pack triple manifold and carbs, a transistorized ignition system, an electric fuel pump, and a cool can. These scat packages are part of your product, too, with them. You can give your customers all the show or go they want, so you've got to know your product. And you got to hit the bug books, the buff magazines. Some salesmen go through as many as 25 a month. Well, you don't have to go that far, but you do have to stay in touch with what interests us. As a matter of fact, your Scat Pack Club, which already has thousands of members, can keep you in close touch with what's happening. Besides, there's the special Learn to Earn session on high performance, a 110-page Bible, which tells in layman's terms what it's all about. Know your competition. Be ready to tell me why I should buy one of your scat pack over a hot Chevy or Ford. Know how to drive your scat car as well. If you try to sell me four on the floor, or even three speed, and you can't shift smoothly and easily, I'll lose a lot of enthusiasm. Convince my dad that he can have his cake and eat it too. Uh, 
he'll, he'll buy that great Challenger RT if he can convince Ma that it's comfortable and easy for her to drive. There's a drag strip or stock track wherever you're located. Take a run out there every couple of weeks or so and just watch the action. That's where it is. I don't want to oversimplify, but really, that's all there is to it. If you know your performance product as well as you know the standard Challenger, Dart, Coronet, Charger, Polara, and Monaco, and your market from reading the bug books and the newspaper racing page, and your prospect from watching him at the track, or, again, reading about him in the hot car magazines, and you know where to get the answers to the occasional technical question, most of them can be answered by your service manager or one of his mechanics, or right in your data book. And you know what's happening in the races where dodges are entered and the best local ET on the quarter-mile drag strip. There's no doubt about it. Any major dodge win produces immediate results in dodge sales across the country. That brings up a couple of interesting questions. What kinds of races do Dodges run in? And what kinds of Dodges run in them? Well, generally, Dodges run in stock, super stock, funny car, and dragster competition in oval track races sponsored by NASCAR or USAC. And on quarter-mile drag strips sponsored by NHRA, the National Hot Rod Association, or AHRA, the American Hot Rod Association. There's some action, too, in the Trans Am, the Trans-American Championship Series, which is put on by the SCCA, the Sports Car Club of America. This is a series of 11 races held all across the continent, from Connecticut to Mont Tremblant, from Riverside to Kent, Washington. All of these sanctioning organizations give points to drivers, cars, and manufacturers toward national and world championships. Okay, I understand there are a lot of different organizations which sponsor a lot of different kinds of races. But what kind of Dodges run in them? Well, let me tell you a little about drag racing classes. You can start with stock production cars with no changes allowed in engine or chassis. These must be available in the dealerships. There are all kinds of classes within this category based generally on weight and engine displacement. The super stocks are in a class by themselves, although the same rules apply to them. These include your Charger RT and Coronet RT, the Z28 Camaro, Mustang Mach 1, and others. Then there's the modified production class. Now, these are still basically stock production vehicles, but a few modifications are allowed on the body, chassis, engine, and carburation. The street class allows even more changes, including supercharging, but the car must still be drivable and acceptable on the streets. Now we start to get the real hairy machines. The next class is called moderate competition. These cars are designed for drag racing. They can still be used as street vehicles, but this doesn't happen very often. On these cars, changes are allowed on all parts, but still with some restrictions. The stock body is all you recognize in the competition class. There's no street use for these cars. They're altered for all-out drag strip racing. Then you got the slingshots. Yes, they're also called dragsters or rails. Any resemblance to a passenger car is strictly coincidental. Their bodies, engines, chassis, drivetrains, and everything else can be altered or modified or relocated. They have only two functions. Yeah, to travel that quarter-mile strip in the shortest elapsed time and to hit the timing trap at the end of that strip at the fastest possible speed. There are two classes of dragster, those which run on gasoline and those which run on exotic fuels like alcohol, kerosene, perfume, booze, whatever might move the car just a little bit faster. Now, don't let all this talk about NHRA, AHRA, slingshots, modifieds, and ET scare you off. It's still cars, and cars are your business. There you have it. The product? You've got a scat pack second to nobody's. A variety of cars which sell from way under three grand to, well, where do you want to stop stacking on the goodies? Who uses it? You saw them. Young men, girls, young families, middle-aged men. Performance buyers are primarily young men, but not exclusively. Where's the performance car used? Mainly on the street and the drag strip, on the ovals too, 
but the strips are where the action is. How's the performance car used? On the street as a proud, polished possession. On the strip, maybe with no more modification than knocking off the hubcaps. Or with a lot of modification with parts from maybe your parts department. The language of performance selling? You've got your own Berlitz course. The kids who come in to talk cars, the bug books, the local drag strip, some of your own mechanics. Thanks for your attention, fellas. Next time I'm in your neck of the woods, come on out to the track. We'll get acquainted and talk performance. <laughs>